What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video we're going to talk about professional attire that you need to wear during medical school and we'll separate it out into the preclinical years, the first and second years of med school, and the clinical years, the third and fourth years of med school. Now many of you may think, well, what is he talking about? What kind of clothes you need to wear? I'm going to wear whatever I want. Um, and that may be okay during the first and second year at some locations, but it's definitely not going to be okay um, during your third and fourth years. And the reason is that you're entering the profession of medicine. You know, you're going to be a profession, a healthcare professional. You're entering um, a location now or a stage in your life where you're kind of held to a higher standard. You want to conduct yourself in a certain way. Um, you want to be regarded as such. And so part of your uniform as a professional working person is you need to dress a certain way and come off very professional. Um, I think the problem is that a lot of people in medical school, we kind of went from high school to college and maybe took a year off, but never really entered a career and then went straight into medical school. So we, some of us don't have the understanding of what it's like to be in an office or professional setting and what the requirements are. And believe it or not, there are lots of requirements out there in life of how things should be. And one of it is your attire and also how you behave. Um, so jumping right into it, um, during the first and second years of med school, it's not that bad. Um, it depends really on the school. Um, from what I heard, some schools um, have like rules about what you can wear. You know, some schools say you can't even bring water into our auditorium or you can't wear skirts of some length or you can't wear sweatpants pants or sandals. If your school has those rules, um, you have to, of course, deal with them and abide by them. Uh, my school didn't have any rules, so during the first and second year, I kind of had a basic uniform. It's the same thing I think I wore in college. I just wore like jeans and like just some shoes or sandals if it was hot and like a t-shirt or a thermal when it was cold. Like I kept it super basic and comfy. So at my school, first and second year really didn't matter. But the point I kind of want to make regarding the first and second year is that yes, if your school has rules, you have to abide. And if they don't have rules, you kind of have a lot of freedom. Just don't dress inappropriate. Remember that like you are in graduate education, you are getting your medical doctorate. So dress appropriately, be comfortable, wear jeans, be like clean and put together. But it's probably, I don't know, not the best idea in my opinion. You know, my humble, my never humble and biased opinion in this case, um, I don't think it's a great idea to show up like in flip flops and sandals and bring a pillow and a blanket. I've seen some people do that. I think it's just rude. Um, Cause like you're gonna have a lecturer there. Someone took time out of their day to come and teach you during your first and second years. The least you can do is, you know, not only, you know, listen and like maybe like be active and ask questions, but you should at least not come like you're still in bed, you know, just come put together, what you know, comfortable, nothing fancy. But that's just my two cents in the first and second year. I think you should just be, you know, professional, clean, well put together, nothing fancy. You don't need to wear a tie or any kind of things like, like this, but don't come too comfortable. I just think that's just rude to other people around you and like what kind of uh, education you're pursuing. Now, more uh, importantly is how you dress during the third and fourth years of medical school. Um, and that's where it gets into the question of like working in a professional environment because for many people, the third year of med school really is like their first job in a certain way. It's like their first career where they have to present at the hospital at a certain time and be a member of a team and have tasks that need to be accomplished. So it's a job. Um, and not everyone's always had one, um, especially people who are in medical school. Um, I got lucky. I had, you know, I, I worked before medical school, so I had a concept of what it's like to work in a professional environment. And what it means is you need to come off as a professional. Um, a good clinical pearl I got from, actually I think it was a surgery uh, attending, she told told me uh, a medical student should dress like an attending, not an intern. And at first I was a little bit drawn back. I'm like, well, what does that mean? And she's like, well, during intern year, you're worked very hard hours. You're very busy. You're given a lot of tasks. You don't always have time. So whenever you see an intern, they're often kind of loosely put together. This is, you know, an over dramatization and generalization, but it just goes along with her clinical pearl that, you know, interns, you can tell who they are usually, and you can tell who the attending is because they look different. The intern's going to be tired. They'll have like a scruffier white coat with more dirt and stuff hanging out the pockets versus the attending. Um, you know, maybe through time or just because they have more of an understanding of how this works, they'll be more well put together. The white coat's much more crisp, you know, cleaner outfit, look much more, you know, bright. Um, and that's kind of the distinction she was making. She said, when you come in as a medical student, don't have like a wrinkly white coat with your shirt um, poorly done and not well ironed and your pants wrinkly and your shoes scuff um, and all this stuff in your pockets. Come in as a medical student and look sharp like an attending. Dress like who you're going to become. And her comment was, 
you know, just using the general example of guys, uh, make sure your shoes are polished, you know, just they're not scuffy and dusty and such. Um, you have, you know, you ironed your slacks, they're not all wrinkly, um, you know, you got a belt on, your shirt's well ironed and pressed, you know, nothing dirty or stained, they're all wrinkly. You're wearing a tie, um, you have your white coat, it's clean, doesn't have stains on it, um, it's well put together, you don't have a ton of stuff in your pockets hanging out everywhere. So you want to look professional and presentable. The point here is that though it's not something that people may recognize and notice and commend you on, if it's the other way and you look kind of poorly put together, it will be noticed and that's not something you want. You want positive things being noticed about you, not the negatives. Um, so in that simple case, all I'm saying is really come to much well put together. That doesn't mean dress fancy. Um, you know, you don't have to be Mr. GQ here. Just make sure you're wearing clean clothes and you took the time to iron them. You're wearing a tie, your white coat's clean and pressed. You don't have too much stuff in your pockets. It's nothing big, it's not a big deal, but these little things do make differences. Um, and that's the key, little things go a long way, especially in this professional conduct attire thing. Um, a side note for the guys, this is something I've just heard attending after attending tell me, and that's that they want some, you know, medical students wearing ties with their collared shirts. It is much more comfortable, you know, I do agree with everyone out there that not wearing a tie and just having your collar open is just a lot more comfortable, but time after time I've just seen countless attendings comment to medical students and residents when they're not wearing ties, like, hey, where's your tie, you know, just as kind of a joking manner, but what they're saying is wear a tie. And that's something that I've kind of come to adopt, and I had a great lecture by one of the um, neuro stroke neurologists at my university, um, where he said, you know, being a professional is kind of like getting used to this new style and outfit where you wear a shirt and you wear a tie every day and it's kind of part of your uniform of who you are and what you do so whenever you see patients or you're in clinic you know uh, you're always wearing a shirt and a tie and a coat looking very professional so in my opinion I think you know it's my own thing mine again never humble and biased opinion wear a tie with your shirt it's a little bit more you know maybe a little bit uncomfortable for you but really it's not that big of a deal and it looks good you look sharp you look nice people notice it it's a quiet thing you know just come off very looking very presentable it's very basic things I'm discussing nothing groundbreaking um, I kind of feel like I'm being your dad in a way your mom you know but point being just come off clean and presentable um, for women uh, what I know I'm I just from what I've noticed um, I think what people seem to like is just like wearing slacks or like a skirt of appropriate length no like crazy high heels and nothing you know that stands out too much again just like well put together clean professional attire strong white coat press nothing too much in the pocket same thing so this is the attire of third year. There are gonna be exceptions in which when you're not in the inpatient or outpatient settings wearing this professional attire with the white coat, you'll be wearing scrubs with like a white coat or some kind of jacket on top. And that's perfectly fine. You know, surgery, ob gyn anesthesia, these things, um, you know, are around the operating room and you just wear scrubs and that's no big deal at all. So with respect to professional attire, guys, hope this helped. I really think these subtle changes make you look better. Your patients will appreciate it. Your staff is going to be more recognized. Um, it's just it, it can only help you in subtle ways just to come off as more presentable, more professional, and more well put together. Hope this video helped. Leave comments down below if you have any questions or want to provide insight to other viewers. Get onto the Facebook page. You guys are doing a great job of helping the community grow and talking to each other. And as always, guys, enjoy your studies.